Hi, DevOps Enterprise Summit. My name is Andy Grebner, and I'm really pleased to be here with you, at least virtually, and give you some insights on a topic that I care about a lot. I'm here in my kitchen, but now let's go and start sharing the screen because this is what I really want to show you. So let's get started. Uh, today's topic is GitOps and SLO-driven automation, driving faster and better releases. I'm Andy Grebner. I am a DevOps activist at Dynatrace, but also at DevRel for the open source project Captain. I will talk a lot about Captain today. And therefore, if you're interested in learning more, please make sure to check out some of the links. Follow us on Twitter, star us on Git, or join the Slack conversation. We are a CNCF project and really want to make the life of DevOps engineers and SREs easier. All right, let me get started. I want to kick it off with uh, a little, let's say, breaking news alert because I'm pretty sure all of you are trying to get better in automating your delivery and automating your operations. You're moving to the cloud, you're moving to Kubernetes, yet just moving to these new technologies doesn't necessarily give you all the stuff you need, right? Just moving to Kubernetes doesn't give you resiliency as a service. So that means we may all need to prepare for situations where systems go down, where systems don't act as expected, especially systems that we may not even control. In our case at Dynatrace, we also run our systems in the cloud. And uh, thanks to the way we are embracing DevOps, we're embracing SRE, we're embracing automation, we're leveraging observability, we were able to withstand a four hours AWS EC2 outage, outage in the Frankfurt region with zero impact for customers. I really love that uh, Thomas Eisenbichler, who is leading our team, we call it the ACE team, the Autonomous Cloud Enablement Team. They're responsible for running and operating and deploying our software for our SaaS and managed customers that he was sharing the story with me. If you want to read more, there's a blog. But really what this is about is about a sharing session and telling you how we are doing things internally and also how that impacted what we've been giving back to the open source world as part of Captain and how we also then enable our Dynatrace customers to become better in the DevOps and S3 practices. So first of all, to kind of remind ourselves, right? I'm sure Gene and others have been talking about this for many, many years. We SREs and DevOps need to deliver faster and better. We are measured against a different dimension of metrics. I think DevOps on the one hand is using automation to speed up delivery. We are measured against some of the DORA metrics like deployment frequency or lead time for change, so speeding up. On the other side, we have SREs, or however you call them in your organization. I see them emerging out of operations where they are now using automation to ensure resiliency of their environments that they are responsible for, measured against things like change failure rate or time to restore services in case something eventually goes wrong. Okay, so speeding up delivery, and also ensuring resiliency, both heavily relying on automation. And I think one of the things that connects them together are SLO, service level objectives, because in the end, whatever we do, however often we deploy, or whatever we do in production, we also always want to make sure that our services are available to our end users, to our business stakeholders, based on what we have agreed to deliver. These are then our SLA, service level agreements, but we often now measure them as SLO, service level objectives. So we need to do a lot of things. To get there, I think DevOps and SREs must automate many tasks through their pipeline, through their automation scripts. I just highlighted a couple here, and I'm pretty sure they are definitely not complete, whether it's about automated testing, automating security scans, automating your monitoring and observability, adding notifications to it, you know, doing more around what they call zero downtime deployments, whether it's blue, green, canary, all these things we as SREs and DevOps need to figure out how to automate into our pipelines. Not as clearly, as we all know, no shortage of, I call it do-it-yourself Swiss army knife tools or scripting. Um, picking one of my favorite tools, Jenkins, definitely. Uh, I can execute tests with Jenkins. I can add my test result analysis. I can add notifications. So to notify people about the results, I can integrate with my APM with my observability platform. I can add an approval process. I can add chaos engineering, which is, an, I think, an, an, a very emerging uh, new practice, adding security scans, adding the whole thing across multiple stages, and then also adding these zero deployment downtimes, right? So nothing keeps me from doing this 
with the tools we have available by doing a lot of scripting with these tools. The thing though is if we do it with the existing tools and if we are really proficient with writing our automation scripts, then we may end up like Christian Heckelman, a senior DevOps engineer who is responsible for almost a thousand CI CD pipelines. He's constantly reacting to pipeline broken, please fix. Now, why is that? Because his pipelines that he built, his automation scripts that deploy, test, and then just do some evaluation ended up being very complex. This is just one of his pipelines with more than a thousand lines of code, more complex than some of the microservices he's deploying and testing with it. And well, he started a while ago and that escalated pretty quickly, right? Because it's hard, very hard to maintain these pipelines. Next example is from Dieter, one of my colleagues at Dynatrace. Uh, he's responsible for the kind of the new cloud native workloads. Uh, he and his team also started using Jenkins pipelines. Again, well-known system. We know we can do magic things with it. One service was onboarded, more services got onboarded. They needed their little specific things like a different testing tool, a different type of notification, a different metric to pull in for the evaluation. And this thing kind of exploded or kind of what we call it a snowflake effect, many different permutations of these pipelines. Dieter also then did the analysis of actual code duplication across our different automation scripts we use for deployment and keeping things in production. And there we saw we are victim to the same thing that the engineers that write business code are victim, always falling victim to, which is high technical debt, high code duplication, high code complexity. So we thought, how can we solve this? Because we as DevOps and SRE need to automate